Welcome to a deeper understanding, industry leading training videos from Deep Sea Electronics. My name is Matt and I'm a member of the DSC technical support team. In this training video, we're going to be getting familiar with the Configuration Suite software. This includes reading and writing to modules and updating the modules firmware. Let's get started. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to read and write from the Deep Sea module. So at the moment we're actually connected and we're connected via USB to the module. Uh, on the rear of the controller you'll find a USB socket that you plug your lead into. And if I just uh, unplug the connection to my laptop now, you'll hear my laptop. Plug it back in. Yeah, again. And you'll know that every time I connect, up on the right hand side here, you'll see this number appear and disappear. So this number here relates to the type of module that I'm connecting to. So it's telling me I'm connecting to a, a DSC 8610. It's a Mark II. It's firmware version 6.1. And then the number in brackets there is the USB ID number. And this is a unique ID number given to all our controllers. Now, the vast majority of our controllers do connect on USB for configuration purposes, uh, including this module. However, there are some circumstances where you may want to connect on a different protocol. If we just click the drop down menu here for the connect via, you can see at the top we have USB connection, TCP IP, which is when you might place your controller on a localized network, communications port, and in brackets COM5. This is referring to the RS232 port on my laptop. Then down here we have the PCAN USB adapter. So this is a CAN to USB interface. Uh, you'll find this uh, particularly useful when connecting to our E-series range of controllers, such as the E50. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to be connecting via USB. So I'm connected via USB, and the module is listed here. So now I want to read from the module to get all the information I need out of it, all the configuration settings. So I've got two options. I can either click here, and click read configuration from a module or I can click up here where my mouse is showing at the moment and it says also read from module so for the purposes of this testing I'm actually going to click up here just to show you so it's now reading from the module it's transferring the configuration file let me go through its process okay so we've read from the controller now and that's pulled in all the configuration settings for the respective controller. And it will display them all in this menu here. So this menu here is the 8610 configuration menu. This is where you configure your controller to suit the application. So things like all our digital input settings, all our digital outputs, our timers, our generator settings and our engine settings, they're all configured in here to suit your application. Below the configuration menu, we have what's called the SCADA menu, and this displays any real-time information, so it's very useful for diagnostics. Now, this isn't connected by default. You need to manually connect this. So just click on the little drop-down arrow here. It will connect to the module, and it's now going to start pulling in live data. And If you look down the bottom here, you can see the link, the USB connection made to the module. And if I click on something like digital inputs, we can actually see the live data coming in. You can see these digital input names are actually user configured ones. So I've configured these names. So if I just turn on my digital input now, you can see that coming active and then inactive. So this is very useful for fault diagnosis. Now, if I was to disconnect the module by pulling the USB lead out, and then I refresh the SCADA page, I can actually still see the page. I just obviously can't see any live data. The reason I'm showing you this is it's quite useful to look at this page before you go to site so you can familiarize yourself where menus are. So let's click on digital inputs now. We can see that it's nothing active and it's grayed out, but at least we know where the pages are. Okay, so we've read from the module and we've got the configuration file now loaded into our software. We should now think about saving it before we make any changes. So if we go to File and then Save As, we can save the file. 
Um, I've already got this file saved. There's no need for me to save it. But if you're going to go on site and make some changes, I always recommend you save the file before making any changes because you can always revert back to them if there's any problems or you want to put the original uh, configuration file back on the controller as found. Okay, so let's make some changes. If we just click on the little drop down menu here and click inputs, we're going to make we're going to change how a digital input works. So we can either click on the menu here or we can click on the menu here. For the purposes of this, we'll click on this menu here. So digital inputs A to C. And I'm going to change the display of this digital input. Um, rather than call it duty select pack one, I'm going to call it gen door open. This is user configured and it can be whatever I like want it to be. And I'm going to write that value back to the controller. Now, if I want to make more changes before writing, I can do. I could simply go, for example, to the timers section, start timers, and I can extend a timer or do whatever I like, basically, within the configuration file. None of these changes will, make, will take effect until I've written it back to the controller. So go back up here. We've got the read from module. We're going to go to the write to module. So select write to module. It's telling me it's synchronizing is disabled. It's just giving me a warning. It's not really relevant for this test. And it's going to ask me, do I want to write this configuration file? I'm going to select yes. Now, when you write configuration files, you must ensure that the module is in stop mode. Okay, You can't make any changes whilst the engine is running. The module must be in stop mode. If you do want to make changes whilst the engine is running, there are limited functions built into SCADA that you can change. And there's also the running editor, which is on the module fascia on some modules. So you can change things like um, you know, the contrast on the screen and things like that. So I've now written that file back to the module. And if I actually click on my SCADA section here and relaunch it and click digital inputs, you can actually see now it's pulled the new name in there of that digital input. So gen door open. Okay, and I'll just check that works by turning on my switch again. Yep, that works. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. All technical literature is available online at deepseaelectronics.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos.